Hey, this is Kronikaze bringing you a Santa Fighters tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going over the system mechanics, uh, gameplay tips, uh, advanced techniques, and stuff like that. Uh, why I'm doing this is because I feel that the community is not going to grow if people don't uh, know exactly how to do things, or maybe people don't want to play the game. Uh, and this tutorial will not only walk them into it, show them around how the game works, but also give them tips and uh, help them out such and so like that. However, note that I'm going to be leaving a lot of holes in these directions, so you, the player, when you eventually get to it, will experiment for yourself, figure out things and learn on your own at the same time so that a playstyle or a character become yours and yours alone instead of having me spoon feed you. Uh, I know everybody uses an Xbox remote, or maybe most people do, uh, and you have your own button configuration however way you want to play. So I'm just going to be using uh, an arcade stick and the classic three button inputs, punch, kick, barrier, and the macros that go along with it, so that this will be uh, a little bit more broader explanation to uh, everybody instead of having you read only my specific setups or having me influence you in such and so uh, ways. Now, find a new rival. The rules for the game are quite basic. All you have to do is win a certain amount of rounds denoted by these stars, and you'll win the match. If your health is in the green, it means you have a lot of health. If your health is yellow, it means you have a little bit of health left. And if your health is red, well, basically you're one hit. As soon as you win the amount of rounds you need, you'll win the match. Barriers are the game's defense system. If you hold down the barrier button, your character will put up a force field. While this force field is up, anytime an opponent attacks you, you'll block the attack and be able to counterattack it right afterwards. There's no chip damage in this game. However, there are some moves that have a property that break barriers in specific. Mostly combo finishers or powerful kicks or special moves even. Another thing that can break barriers is grabs. If you're blocking while someone grabs you, you'll lose the uh, barrier and you'll get grabbed. Another thing is the slip around strafe, which we'll cover later, but if you're blocking while someone does this to you, you will lose that barrier. Another way you can lose barrier is if you go into hyper mode. Every time a character goes into hyper mode, it uses up one barrier. You have to be careful because there are certain game types, or game modes rather, that barriers don't reset after every round. So you're gonna have to hold on to all of your barriers throughout the entire match. And if you run out of barriers, you'll be in big trouble because you won't be able to use the button anymore or block whatsoever. So it'll be wide open for attacks, leaving you with only maneuvering uh, defense uh, tactics. If you hold back and press the punch and kick buttons together at the same time, you go into what's called hyper mode. In hyper mode, all of your moves will have little to no recovery time, although they'll do a lot less damage and they won't break any barrier. If your opponent's blocking all this uh, hyper mode stuff, they won't take any damage whatsoever until it ends. Also, do note that hyper mode uses up one barrier, so you have to know when to use it at the right time and what situation that it's most useful in. One of the more unique system mechanics about Santa Fighters is its catch-up system. What it is, is the player who has lower health in the round will do more damage. So if you're low on health and you do an attack, it'll do more damage than usual. And until you guys are bounced out in health, or until the opponent's dead, your damage won't uh, get any influence anymore whatsoever. Certain moves uh, have more catch-up value than others. For example, the drop kick or its grabs, or command grabs for that matter. They do uh, a lot more damage than regular stuff like punch combos or claps. However, on the flip side, if you have more health than your opponent, your, some of your moves may actually do less damage. So, it can really balance out either way. However, I would watch out. Don't use moves like the dropkick that specifically do a lot more uh, catch-up value than other moves, because you might get yourself killed or punished because of it. Also, do note that uh, the catch-up value doesn't work on some attacks at all. If you have low health whatsoever and you're trying to do a certain attack, and it doesn't have this value, it won't do any additional damage. Not saying you should avoid these attacks whatsoever, but I wouldn't try to use them either at the same time. Battling in this game works like any other 2D fighter, except you're in a 3D environment. However, if you start strafing or you do rolling techs off the floor, your opponent will move out of the 2D plane and the game will start to see a, uh, seem a little bit more 3D. Another thing to note is that this game features a lot of launchers and wall bounces. Practically any combo will wall bounce you. Although, just because this happens all the time doesn't mean it's always the same. A lot of factors can play into this being different. For example, if a player recovers or bounces off the wall in a specific way, you'll be able to get out of it and go back into neutral combat immediately. So nothing is ever the same when it comes to this kind of system. There is no real rule of thumb for determining how a combo will work or how long it'll last in Santa Fighters. For the most part, combos aren't really supposed to be a part of the game. It's kind of just something that happens. 
However, there are built-in combos that are meant to be, like Sonic's Punch combo, or Amy's uh, Hammer combo, or maybe someone's special Uppercut combo, or something like that. But as far as uh, actual combos in this game goes, it determines whether or not by the uh, opponent uh, advanced techs or whatnot. For example, if an opponent air recovers, your combo will be null and void whatsoever. Or if they don't air recover or tech in any sort of way, a combo can be devastating or hell, endless for that matter. So it's really safe uh, not to try and do anything crazy and just let the combos play out as to what they're meant to be. There's quite a bit of stage interaction with Santa Fighters, well to be specific with the walls. If you're facing the right way you can jump up a wall or you can jump off the wall while facing the other way. You can do attacks off of it, into it, and you can do whatever you want. You can even do attacks off of the middle of the wall that can break barrier. So using the stage interaction can catch your opponent off guard and it's a really nice thing to have outside of your character's regular playstyle. In case you don't know, uh, this game features only three buttons, like the original arcade unit had, which is punch, kick, barrier. If you want to know what the macros are for this game, it's just punch, kick, uh, barrier, just for those specific things. It's punch, kick, which is mostly the flying option for most characters like Tails, Knuckles, Metal Sonic, and Bark I think has a spitting move. Uh, if you do punch, barrier, that is the grab for the game. A lot of the grabs in the game are, if not all, that macro, punch, uh, barrier. Kick barrier is what I like to call the heavy kick. Although it does the heavy kick with most characters, uh, some characters it does a different type of kick or something different entirely. Punch kick barrier all at the same time is strafing, and that we'll be going over a little bit later. There's not a whole lot to know when it comes to teching in this game, or recovering as some people like to say. If you're on the floor due to a, a wall bounce or something along those lines, you can press forward to get up right in place, or you can press down to roll out of place and maybe avoid attacks if you can see them incoming. If you don't press anything, you'll stay on the floor, although you will get up in place eventually. Although this one isn't uh, recommended because your opponent can still hit you while you're on the floor. If uh, you press strafing buttons, which is punch kick barrier, all three buttons at the same time in the air, you'll do what's called an air recover. This is good, so nobody can do an endless combo to you, and you can even do an attack out of the air recovery if you're quick enough. There's also another thing that only certain attacks uh, will work with. If your opponent uppercuts you or something along those lines, you can do what's called the super air recover, where if you hold back or forward in a certain direction, and you press strafe, you'll actually launch yourself in the air to a complete safe place in the area, thus uh, rendering uh, infinite combos or constant juggles useless. Now that you understand how the game works, let's talk about some things you can do to your opponent, like punching. Every character has their own unique punching ability, and a lot of them are fast and can break barrier and are damaging. However, at the same time, punches are the most unsafe way to deal damage to your opponent. Punches can easily be cancelled out by kicks or be strafed out of and punished. While punching is definitely the fastest way, it can only be used if you can catch your opponent off guard if you're willing to meet some sort of risk, or maybe catch them uh, on a mix-up of some sort but it should still be noted that punching is definitely the most unsafe way to go in this game. Kicking in this game is a little bit more self-explanatory. A lot of characters have the same kick combo, which is just three kicks forward. However, this combo can be blocked or even strafed out of if your opponent knows how to do it right. There are also many different kinds of kicks, such as a diagonal kick or a heavy kick or something like that, and most of them do break barrier. However, the regular kick combo does not break barrier. That should also be noted. Still, despite all of this, a lot of kicks can break out a lot of punches and cancel moves out entirely. So kicking may not also be the safest, but it's definitely a nice move select to do if you want to cancel out your opponent's move. Grabbing plays a huge role in Sonic the Fighters. If your opponent is standing and you'll actually land the grab on them, you'll do a lot of damage. And if you have low health, you'll do even more damage because grabbing has a lot of catch-up value. There are a lot of different types of grabs, but most of them require a certain input. You can even grab your opponent if they're blocking and you'll break that barrier and still follow up with the grab. However, despite how useful grabs are, they can also be easily avoided. All that your opponent has to do is duck, short hop, strafe, or just move in any type of way whatsoever and the grab will fail. However, ducking is the most useful way since not only you'll be right in front of your opponent, you'll be able to counterattack with anything or even counter grab for that matter. Let's talk a little bit more about hyper mode. In hyper mode, you can do a lot of offensive pressure to your opponent, forcing them to block or forcing them into a specific area in the map. If they're blocking, they still won't take any damage, however, they won't be able to get out of the block or counterattack during the rest of the hyper mode duration. So this means that you can easily grab your opponent or do a setup for when hyper mode ends with any type of move. 
you can break barrier, strafe around, or just do a grab. It's recommended to do grabs though since grabs don't do reduced damage in hyper mode. And not to mention, in hyper mode, a lot of your moves, or at least certain moves, have significantly more hit stun or block stun for this, uh, for this case. So that your opponent won't actually be able to do anything whatsoever. On the flip side, if your opponent is smart and chooses not to block, they'll still take reduced damage, and if you can do the right chain of moves, you'll still do a little bit of damage, and it's worth the barrier risk. So, going into hyper mode towards the end of your match is probably the smartest thing to do, although it can still get you killed if you don't know how to use it properly. Now that we've went over ways to attack your opponent, let's talk about ways you can defend yourself against them. Knowing when to use your barriers is a very nice tactic to use in Santa Fighters. You need to make your barriers last the whole match, so knowing when to use them is a little bit hard to do, but it also can be very rewarding. If you have a lot of health to spare and you know your opponent's going to do a move that breaks your barrier, just take the damage and save your barrier, because you're going to need it in the long run. If your opponent gets rid of all your barrier, you're most likely screwed for that game, so it's a nice tactic to have at least one around, because you never know, it might just save your game, and it might save your butt. Knowing what type of move to use at the right time can be very useful in Santa Fighters, as like I said before, certain moves can be cancelled out by other moves. It's not so much about reading your opponent as it is a gamble in such fast paced gameplay, so experiment for yourself and find out which move uh, list works out for you and what time to use it. Although like I said, this is more of a gamble than reading your opponent as everybody plays differently, so use this wisely and experiment with it yourself. As stated before, it is very easy to avoid grabs by means of jumping or even short hopping or strafing, although it's not really about avoiding grabs as much as it is punishing a failed grab, which is why ducking is the most useful. However, be warned, reading a grab can be much of a gamble as it is a read or a mix-up, so your opponent might be able to run in and not do a grab at all, read your duck and trick you, and then punish you immediately. So knowing when to avoid a grab or how to do it is more or less a gamble, so experiment for yourself and find out which way works best for you. I already went over how to air recover, which is just pressing punch kick barrier at the same time or a macro for it while being in the air wall bounced. However, it should be noted that if you land on the floor, you'll still be open to attacks for a fraction of a second. You won't even be able to barrier. If your opponent knows this, he can constantly get you back into resets with combos and keep air juggling you or wall bouncing you repeatedly until you die. So knowing when and when not to air recover is a very useful tactic in Sonic the Fighters. For example, if your opponent is doing this and re trying to read your reset and you don't air recover, he's not going to be able to hit you when you fall down, and if you get up immediately, you'll be back in neutral combat or even better, you'll be able to punish him. So it should be noted that using air recover is not always the best thing to do. Although don't forget, if you're being juggled and you can't get out of it, you always have the super air recover which is using a direction and pressing strafe or punch kick barrier, at the same time, you'll launch yourself into a safe area. There's another type of strafe which can only be done if you're really close up to your opponent or if you punch them and get at least a hit confirmed, as to say you hit them first and then do the input, which is punch kick barrier. If you do this, your opponent will be confused for a second and you'll be able to actually go around them and attack. If they're blocking, you can also break their barrier and continue doing the same thing. However, on the flip side, if your opponent knows you're going to do this and he reads you or he just gets really lucky and gets quick reaction, they will be able to hit you first and punish you. So it's kind of a gamble to know when to use it, and it should only be used in certain instances where you can catch your opponent off guard and punish. Although like I said, they have the higher priority all the time, so if they know you're going to do this they'll be able to hit you out of it. So this tactic can be very risky as it is rewarding. Strafing is a very useful tool to have in Santa Fighters for your character arsenal. It can get you out of combos, it can safely get you out of any type of move, it can actually get you out of a move and punish, it's really useful to have. It's a nice way of getting in, and it's also a nice way of getting out at the same time. Knowing to use this properly can separate the basic players from the advanced players. All forward strafing is is holding forward while pressing the strafe input, which is punch kick barrier or a macro for it, and you actually move forward, and if you're close enough to your opponent, you actually move around them and be able to do an attack. However, it can be punished just as easily or even counter strafed by them doing the same input, it's still very useful to know, and it can be useful to get out of certain types of attacks or situations. However, it should also be noted that if you're in a corner, force shift doesn't work so well against attacks, so you might be screwed in all the same. So going back to your original tactics or your roots can also be a nice thing to have to fall back on. That's all I have to say as far as Santa Fighters goes. Like I said, I left a lot of holes in this and a lot of strategies out so that you can develop your own strategies and your own tactics and become your own type of fighter. 
So go out there, have fun, and thanks for watching.